So let me get this straight. You guys want to take the vehicle that we've been spending so much time making look incredibly cute and you want to turn it into a zombie destroyer. Jeez, you guys have no chill, eh? Let's build it. The project from this episode will be available for free members over on the CG Cookie site, so make sure to head over there and grab it. We've got a ton to cover in this episode. Let's start by creating some rims for the windshields. Selecting one of the edge loops from the car body mesh, I'll duplicate it and separate it. With the separated edge loop, I'll select the center vertex and use checker deselect to get every other vertice. Then I'll just dissolve these selected vertices and repeat the process once more. Basically, it's an easy way to decimate geometry that's only vertices. It works pretty well. Then I'll go ahead and convert the edge to a curve, add some depth to it, and then in edit mode, go up to the curve option and change the spline type to be NURB. This will round out those sharp corners for free. And you can't beat free, right? I'm going to quickly repeat that entire process now for the rear windshield, and that's going to be pretty much it for step one. Let's separate the windshield for the time being because I want to edit it just a little bit. I'll grab each one of these edge loops and bevel them ever so slightly. Now grabbing only the bottom loop of each bevel, I want to scale them in using Alt S to push them along the normals. Then we can grab each one of these loops, open up our side panel and give them a bevel weight of 0.1. I think you know where I'm going with this. Since it looks kind of bad, let's add some bevel and subsurf modifiers. Use the weight limit method and an amount of 0.01. Now we have some nice and sharp metal strips. Now I'm not going to waste your time going through all of that again, but just know that I did the exact same process for the rear windshield as well so that a ride is nice and fortified. Our next goal is to add some steel beams. I'm going to use a path curve since that's probably the easiest way. I'll make sure to add a mirror modifier as well, and once we've got it placed where we want it, let's extrude out some ends and then add some extra subdivisions. I'll also bring the order U slider up to soften the transitions a bit. Let's start bringing our beam over just a little and continue to duplicate and reposition the new pieces until the windshield is totally covered. Next, we can snag one of the pieces rotate it and slap it onto the side windows to give them a little bit of coverage too. I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but I want to make sure that we're not getting any zombies breaking in from the sides either. We're going to have to repeat the process for the rear windshield as well in case they get kind of sneaky like and think they can hit us from the back. The final beam we will be making is one to reinforce the roof of the vehicle. I'll prop it up on the top side just over the doors. I also want to lift the front end up just slightly. In order to build a front bumper, I'm going to use another path curve, but this time I want to use the mirror modifier to clip it halfway. This one's going to be a little bit thicker so that it can withstand the weight of any zombies it may come across. I'll make sure that the bottom rounds back and in so that there is some connection to the vehicle. I'm also going to duplicate the top row and scale them down so that we have a fully reinforced barrier to work with. Next up, spikes. Let's start with a cube, bring it up to sit on the origin, and use the 3D cursor pivot to scale it back in. I'll then scale it in at the top to sharpen it out, and add a subsurf mod with a level of 2. We can remove the bottom face, and I will manually bevel out the top so it doesn't look as gross. Then I'll just scale in the whole thing so it's not as fat, and we're ready to go. Let's change the snap to option to be faces and check on align rotation to target. Now when I hold control, I can essentially snap the object to the face of the car with whichever vertex is closest on our spike. Add a mirror modifier, duplicate the spike a couple times, and you've got yourself some Mad Max looking accessories, or Madonna if you're not the road warrior type. And now as if this wasn't starting to look deadly enough, let's add some buzz saws. Create a circle with 24 or more vertices. Selecting them all, then using the checker deselect method, scale in half of them slightly. Fill that face with F, then select everything else and fill those faces in as well. Let's add a mirror modifier, a solidify modifier, a bevel modifier with an incredibly small amount, 
and finally a weighted normals modifier. You likely haven't used this one a ton, but if we set the weight to 100 and then check on auto smooth, it'll make our shading much nicer. Now we can just position these here and maybe duplicate a second pair to rotate a little bit. The next component we are going to need to achieve the maximum apocalyptic look is going to be chains. If you want to learn more about making non-destructive chains in Blender, make sure to watch the full tutorial we have on it here. Link is down below as well. Using a torus to define the shape of my chains, I'm going to add an array and curve modifier, making sure that we're selecting the new path curve I've created as the object for both. Now manipulating the curve will control them, but we still need to use an empty object instead to position the chains. With this empty, I'll move it over on the x-axis just slightly and rotate it 90 degrees on the x as well. Editing the curve will now be the way that we're going to move this around our model. We might need to also resize the chains, so reorganizing our empty to re-offset the chains may be required. With our chain link selected, I can simply add a mirror modifier onto it and we're going to get easy chains for both sides of the vehicle. Finally, I don't think it's really appropriate for our little guy to be wearing such little protection. Instead, we need to kit him up. Using the same hat, I'm going to modify it just a little bit using a simple circle, the solidify modifier, and a bevel modifier. Make sure that the order is solidify at the top, bevel modifier, and then the subserve at the bottom. And I want to weight the bottom edges because it's looking a little soft as well. A simple helmet is not enough, however. We need them to actually fit the part. Let's steal a couple spikes that we created earlier and line them up onto the helmet so that he's ready for whatever's gonna come his way. Now, the boring parts. Because we took the rims from the body, they have some animation on them which is going to conflict. So let's quickly clear any keyframes either of them have and remove the animation modifiers that we also had provided them. Once that's cleared, let's focus now on parenting all of this gear. First, I'll remove the constraints on the hat, but you could also keep it and just parent the spikes to the cactus instead. I'll be honest, I didn't really think of this until after I've already recorded. I'm going to add an empty into this collection to be used as the parent. Parent everything to that empty, making sure to keep transforms. I'm also now going to have to apply the lattice on our body and windshields since it's gonna give us some weird animations. With this new empty parent, let's add a copy location constraint and use the body as our target. Now, when I play the animation, everything should go with it. Well, that's gonna be it for our time together in this episode. Thank you to everyone that voted on Zombie Destroyer. Jeez, you guys are morbid. And make sure to check the description for the link to our next poll item. As always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. Later, skater. So why didn't the zombie cross the road? Well, he didn't have any guts. And he saw the thing we just built. Like, I wouldn't cross the road. Are you kidding me? Why don't zombies eat comedians? Because they taste funny. Well, looks like this guy's safe. Please laugh.